Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be on the Metal Foe Zodiac deck that I played at the Charlotte Regional in Charlotte, North Carolina two days ago on April 15th, 2017, to which I finished 7-2 overall and ended up placing 12th after the Swiss rounds. I lost like round 6 to uh, some bad just draws going into time that allowed me to not be able to play game 3, and then I lost the last round of Swiss to Calvin Tahan, who ended up getting first place at the regional with his 60 card ABC lawn mowing grass looks greener nonsense deck. Uh, for the same reason, ended up not being able to play the last game of the match because I did not draw any Metal Foes scales. But I'll be doing a completely separate video doing a regional report on that that should hopefully be going up later today as well. So if you're interested, I'll link it in the description and it'll also be on my channel if you want to look for it there. So I'll just be going round by round because it was a nine round regional and it was very well run and there's a lot of stuff that was uh, going on at it. But I played Metal Foes Zoom and I decided that I wanted to play what I refer to lovingly as Caveman Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, which is why I played this specific build and the way that I played it. And what I mean by Caveman Yu-Gi-Oh! is I mean there are some very simple yet powerful interactions that are going on in uh, in this deck with some card choices that I've made uh, that just make me want to play like a caveman. I just want a big stick, and that's all I want. Big stick, and that's how we win the fight. Um, but So this is a 52-card deck list. Uh, there are a couple cards I've thought about cutting since the, uh, since the regional happened uh, to bring it down to like 50 or maybe 48. Uh, but basically, I just kept putting cards into a list and it kept working. I originally was going to play 60 cards, but then I sliced it down from there to get to this uh, deck list. And I was I was happy with how it functioned, except for the two matches that I lost strictly to not opening any scales, game t uh, games three. Uh, but anyway, the uh, deck list is as follows. Triple Volflam, Triple Gold Driver, Triple Silvered, Two Steelin, and Three Bismagear. Uh, this ratio is a mistake. Uh, I could not find uh, a third Steelin. I built the, uh, the deck basically like the day before. Uh, me and my friends went up to uh, North Carolina on Friday, and I just took every card I thought I needed. Um, and I actually only had two Steelins on me, but I had three Bismagears. <laughs> so I played three Bismagear, and I couldn't find a third Steelin um, to save my life. Uh, so I ended up playing two Steelin and three Bismagear, which is just 100% incorrect. Uh, you want the uh, third Steelin simply because it's a card that you can, you can open multiples of. It works with Painful Decision. And as well as that, you also, you know, you get to pendulum summon it back, which you don't get to do with Bismagear. <laughs> but regardless, uh, three Arch Phoenix Centric. This card is essentially a metal foe in itself. This card is amazing. Uh, hits all the right angles, hitting strike and all that sort of nonsense. Uh, one Dragoons of Draconia. This is the only scale that I played that was searchable off Broad Bull. And I actually didn't search it the entire day. I was just like drawing into it uh, because I was usually just searching the Lunalite Light monster. Uh, but. One copy of Clifford Scout and Clifford Monolith, and then two copies of Mist Valley Apex Avion. The reason I'm putting these all together is because they are essentially all the exact same thing. Um, I didn't want to play like three copies of Apex Avion because like Scout is searchable off Summoner's Art, and it's essentially the exact same thing. You use the Scout engine to go into your Monolith to pendulum these and make Cyber Dragon Infinity, and that's essentially you know a negation card. It's a, it's a Solemn Judgment type card, and Mist Valley Apex Avion is the same kind of thing. Um, and I, so I wanted more of these kinds of cards. This is what I mean when I say I played Caveman Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, I wanted more of these big, like, apish style cards where you're just like, I just don't want you to activate cards. <laughs> that's the, that's how I want this to go. But Apex Avion is just great. I absolutely just love, I've always loved this card in any Pendulum deck that can really heavily support it. Um, and so being able to just Pendulum Apex Avion out every turn, like, that you're able to stick a Pendulum Summon is just a huge and valuable thing. Like, it's incredible. Uh, and, like, Paleo can't really deal with this card. Like, I've played against so many Paleo decks, so many Toad decks, and these cards all, in general, just generate cards that operate like Totally Awesome, but are bigger than Totally Awesome. So, like, it was just a fantastic interaction. Like, just being able to Pendulum Summon Apex Avion, and then just have it be bigger than everything in your opponent's deck, and also be a form of negation that dodges things. So, like, they can't really effectively deal with this. Even if they try to, like, summon Anomala Karras to try and out this card, you can still just attempt to negate the Anomala Karras with this, bouncing it to your hand. Uh, and then the Anomala Karras is just unaffected by the monster effect, so it'll stay on the board. But then you just Pendulum this out next turn and try to kill the Anomala Karras again, and you just easily start eating away all of its materials off of it. Um, and, like, that's the only real proactive card that they can make against you, because Toads just get run over by the Apex Avion or the Infinity. So, like, it was a fantastic card. Would definitely run again. This card was great. Uh, but... Because I'm playing the Zoo deck, uh, I played three Bababoon and uh, double Lone Fire. I actually really missed the third Lone Fire. Uh, the reason I only played two Lone Fire was because Lone Fire kind of really sucks going second, and the two Lone Fires were definitely sided out every game that I went second. But I kind of made this concession in my mind to only play two Lone Fire because you don't really want to see it going second over Bababoon 
Baba Boon is fine to see going second because it can play around strike and stuff like that because they're not really going to strike it. If you Pendulum Summon with it, they're not really going to strike it because if you do, you're just going to go into your zoo play anyway. Um, there's multiple different things that like make it good, whereas Lone Fire is just strictly weaker. Um, so I like went. I decided to forego the consistency game one um, for uh, like going second and having the deck just overall have better cards in it suited for going second. Like being able to set your scales and Pendulum out an Apex Avion to like start your turn and then start doing plays was typically something that I was trying to go for. Um, and it ended up like being kind of all right um, as far as a deck building choice because I lost all but one die roll um, out of the nine rounds. I mean, but like that's that's a very anecdotal way to look at things and shouldn't be the way you try to justify reasons. But I did miss the third Lone Fire. Um, I'd probably put the third Lone Fire back in, but they do always get sided out when you're going second in sided games. Uh, but three copies of Speedroid Teratop and the one Takatomborg, you know, giving you more access into zoo plays. It's strictly weaker than if you draw Bababoon plus Scale. Uh, because you're not cycling as many cards out, but I mean, you are still drawing two off the zoo combo, so that's fine. Uh, now, the only Zodiac monsters in the main deck are Rap Piers, because all you're really trying to do is resolve the zoo combo once, just to get your extra cards and get your uh, Dryden board, um, and then your Emerald just sits there, so if it survives, it's pressuring your opponent as well. Uh, but there's no other there's no other zoo cards in the deck. Searching Whiptail isn't, like, viable, really. Like, you'd rather be searching the Black Sheep or the Scale, because the Scale is more proactive to your Metal Foes game engine. And that's what you're trying to do literally after every zoo opening that you do. But Lunar Light Black Sheep, this card's cool. Search Fusion Substitute, draw two cards, neat. Uh, I decided to main two Retaliating C and a Max C. So I was playing Sangin at the last regional that I played this deck at. And then I realized, I was like, why am I playing Sangin literally to only search Max C? Because that's all I was doing Sangin with Sangin the entire day. Because if you search Metal Foe Scales or Archfiend Eccentric, it's usually just typically awful. You always just want to search the most powerful hand trap in the game with the Sangin. And I was like, wait. I could just be playing Retaliating C. It's a more relevant <laughs> level because it's a four. You could overlay with it into fours. Um, and then it's also a hand trap. So it literally functions just like Sangin does, but it's a hand trap that's also a Macrocosmos. Um, so, like, these were just in the deck uh, for that. Now, these still weren't that great because these suck against Paleo and, like, Toad decks. And, like I said, I played against a ton of Toad decks. I played against no Zoo, and that's what these were for. I played against no decks that had a Zodiac card in them out of nine rounds. I played against just Paleo, Paleo, Paleo. Toad deck, Toad deck, Toad deck, and then ABC. So like, it was just uh, it was just not really that viable uh, as far as a card. So these would probably come out of the main deck, and they'd probably just go into the side deck. They are still very strong against Zoo and stuff like that. Uh, but as far as like the gimmick of penduluming it and then searching Maxi, I only did that once. I like, eh, eh. That's that's my re that's my official response is eh. Uh, <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Uh, but I have no idea how many monsters this is. I think it's like 35 or 37, if I remember correctly. It's a lot. It's a 52-card deck, like I said. But in these spells, we have more ways to get to monsters, with Triple Summoner's Art and Two Painful Decision. Uh, two Painful Decision because it's a hard once per turn. You don't want to draw multiples of it, uh, but it is like one of the better starter cards. But Summoner's, uh, Summoner's Art, not once per turn. And it's just extra copies of Wolflame, and it's the copy of the Scout and the Monolith. So it's just, the deck is increased in size, up to 52, but you are using that space to just play more cards that get you there. So it's essentially making your grass matchup stronger, but then also, like, you're not really dropping that much consistency. But uh, one Fusion Substitute for the Lunalight Combo, one Metal Foes Fusion, and one full Metal Foes Fusion. This card was actually, like, the not very activated for me. It could just be unnecessary, uh, but being able to make Alkahist on your opponent's turn is uh, super strong. Uh, but then three counter and one combination. Um, I love three counter. Some people were cutting this to two. Some people were even playing one of it. I think that's just a mistake. Uh, Metal Foes counter is that card that just lets you go second, get dimensional barriered or striked or whatever, and then you just use your remaining scales to set two or three counters, and you say, okay, you're not killing me. So now I've got another turn to play this game. Like that's how you go second with this deck is that you try to force through like a play or two to you know bait out some back row in some optimum situations for you and then you just set all of your counters and don't die <laughs> and the counters just put you back into the game because your opponents either not going to attack you which is fine because that gives you turn after turn to get back into the game or they're going to attack you trigger two or three of your counters and then you're just going to absolutely overrun them with what your resources are because you're going to have two to three vanilla pendulums on the board and then the cards you used to fuel into the counters on the previous turn are going to be able to be added back off the counter from its graveyard effect during your turn. So it's just a huge momentum swing for you to get resources back when you're going second. Also, this card's just amazing against Paleozoic. Uh, when this is in the grave, specifically, 
you can like you I try to rush to get as many of these in the grave as possible against paleo cuz it's just perfect uh, because all the paleo traps have to respond to directly to a trap on field activation so you can make them miss timing rather easily when your opponent activates a trap to try and summon back one of their paleo dudes then you just chain one of the counters from grave to add back one of your metal foes uh, to your hand, and then that's just great because that means that their trap and grave doesn't get to activate. They've got to invest more cards into it, and so basically it just ends up being really, really well uh, situated for you and in your favor. But then, last three cards in the deck were three dimensional barrier. I'm trying to skip my opponent's turns. Uh, this deck doesn't really get its uh, turns skipped that often by this card because it operates on so many different like axes. Like you've got fusion, pendulum, annex seas all being supported very well in this deck. Um, and so, like, if they call Pendulum, you can Xyz, and usually Fusion, if they call Fusion, you've got a Pendulum deck that you can make zoo combos with, and if they call Xyz, then you get to Pendulum and Fuse. Like, this deck is so well, well situated and so well rounded, and this deck is amazing at grinding, uh, especially once you implement cards like Scout and Apex Avion, like, they give you an end game to the grind game, uh, like, this just becomes fantastic. This is just an amazing deck. I love this deck. I love Pendulum Summoning, and it doesn't really have a normal summon problem, either which I was having with uh, some other decks like ABC that I was testing, where you just have too many normal summons in hand. But uh, for the extra deck, two copies of Metal Foes Mithrilium. I never missed the third. Um, there was, like, some times that I wanted a third, but it didn't, like, hamper the game to the point where I could have just made something else and still won. Like, it wasn't like a, 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 like, I'm missing the third so I can't win this scenario. Like, it was just I'd had to do some awkward plays to get the one back in circulation and then make it, but I never really missed it. It wasn't a big factor. But one Metal Foes Oriahawk. Uh, one full metal foes Alkahist, and then one Norden is all the fusion monsters. This is only summonable a fusion substitute. Uh, Alkahist is really cool, uh, especially when you're doing your first turn zoo plays. You usually are able to f uh, fusion summon with metal foes fusion into an Ori Halk and have the quick play fusion set. Uh, so then you're able to full metal foes fuse on your opponent's turn, Ori Halk away uh, into Alkahist, and Ori Halk pops a card, and then Alkahist gets to suck up another one. So it's a it's a wonderfully uh, like multi it's a multitude of defensive lines that you have on top of the fact that you always just always have Drancia, and you might have Cyber Dragon Infinity or Apex Avion with it. So, like, you're literally just making board upon board that your opponent has to try and break through, and that's just really good for you. But one Cyber Dragon, Nova, and Infinity for the for the Scout Monolith package, uh, all that sort of just obvious stuff. Uh, two copies of Digesto Emerald. This is a card that I'm actually really iffy on. The second copy of Emerald might just be cut. Um, I made the second copy of Emerald, like, two matches. Uh, but it was definitely not necessary. You're only ever trying to do the Zodiac combo once. You're always putting back cards like Bababoon um, and like Broad Bull just because it's a generic rank 4 um, off your uh, first Emerald. But the second one almost never gets made, but when it does get made, it's so game impacting that I feel like it's worth the play over any other rank 4 that would be in its slot. Specifically because like you can do things like shuffle back the Klee engine and Summoner's Art back into another Infinity or stuff like that. Uh, like, there's just options for it. Uh, like I said, it, the second Emerald only came up a couple of times during the regional, but it was definitely something that was uh, that was very heavily impactful when it happens because you just use, like, two Gold Drivers to go into it, and then that just gives you a good rank 4 to overlay to with Gold Drivers anyway to put a Gold Driver in the graveyard to fuel Mithrilliums to shuffle back and stuff like that. Like, it's just overall just really, like, it's, it's really solid. I don't know if I would play a second rank, a different rank 4 in the slot of the second Emerald or not um, at this point. Uh, but if I did, it would have to be a really damn good rank 4, like something that has, has like tons of utility. Or it would have to be like a rank 3 like Breaksword uh, that has a lot of utility in certain uh, aspects. But anyway, uh, for the Zoo stuff, you're only trying to do the Zodiac combo once, uh, so just one of each of them. You really only need three of them as well uh, to do the full Zoo combo. You don't even need Tiger Mortar. Uh, but the reason you play Tiger Mortar is that you just stack it on top of uh, whatever's left, and then you make your Dryden on top of it, because sometimes with certain plays, if you're doing... A Bow Baboon play, and you also have Cleefort Scout in there, uh, then you're going to have to use one of your Dryden effects on your own turn detaching material to pop the Scout out of your scale so you can play another Metal Foe scale. Um, if you're doing a Bow Baboon play on top of the Scout play, like if you had both of them. So it's actually kind of important to have the extra one because then it leaves you a material under the Dryden for your opponent's turn to make Dryden into a defense. Uh, but other than that, the only other rank threes are Totem Bird and MXA Room Invoker. And more of these cards, like my deck is just full of these cards, <laughs> that just let your opponent not activate certain things. Uh, that's that's what we're all about: uh, is not letting your opponent play Yu-Gi-Oh with uh, with cards and interactions. But even when the uh, when when they are playing Yu-Gi-Oh, this deck is uh is one of the best suited at like grinding in this current format because you get to Pendulum Summon for up to five every turn. Other decks just don't get to do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
So like you can just you can play into and around strikes and barriers and stuff all that you want. You can survive going second and survive lackluster openings just by walling up on Metal Foes counters. Like it's just a wonderfully constructed deck and it's one of my favorite decks that I've played in a long time. Now there are some, definitely some changes I'm probably going to make to it. Like I said, I'm probably just going to take the Retaliating Seas out of the deck, main deck. It's not something that's super important uh, to uh, to keep in to try and like floodgate my opponent's turn one. I would definitely side deck the card, uh, but other than that, uh, not much going on about it. Now, the side deck that I played is probably completely out of order, but that's fine. Uh, I played two Jinko Seka. These definitely should have been holding legs, but I could not get access to them for the uh, for the event. I did not have anyone around that had them, and I could not find anyone that was selling them, including vendors and all that. Uh, but So I played Denko instead. I didn't want to play Jinzo because I didn't want to pendulum summon Jinzo into a strike. Uh, but Denko was so awkward because I was just like having to like do these really weird play lines to like get all my sets out of the way and then summon Denko. I mean, it worked out almost every time that I summoned Denko. It was always like a, just a game, a game ender. But like still, it was just really awkward trying to summon it in certain situations. But uh, two copies of Necro Valley. I think this card's great. I think this card's fantastic. You can just turn it off with your own Metal Foes car um, uh, scales. So there's not really that huge thing. If people are like, oh, your Necro Valley is going to shut off your Metal Foes Fusion and your counters and stuff. I mean, you can just you can use this to stun your opponent for a turn and then pop it and then just do your entire play string. So it's like, it's it's completely fine as far as that goes. But Raigeki, this card was really good. Uh, Storms and Full House. These cards were interesting. Uh, I don't think I would ever side Storm again. Storm is cool in theory, but I think Twin Twister is just strictly better because this deck can amass so many free cards. Uh, and then Full House was really good the one time I resolved it, but the problem is, is that it's a card that you can't really side for going second. You you put it in going first against like Paleo, uh, and then it's just like a blowout. But so, I mean, I'd probably still play Full House. I'd probably bump it to three, and then maybe Storm would probably become Twin Twister, honestly. Uh, I played Triple Lullaby of Obedience, and like I said, I didn't play against any deck that had a Zodiac card in it, and I wish that I did because I was so prepared. Just like go Lullaby, Call Terra Top, or yeah, Call Terra Top, and then... Uh, and then have like a totem bird and then do my Baba Boom plays or just do my zoo plays. It's just an additional starter card. And like I just didn't get to do that. So we. Uh, and then one Imperial Order usually came in for like uh, grass decks and stuff like that. Uh, which I played a lot of because I played a lot of Paleo. Neat that, eh? Uh, but then I cited two extra deck cards just for. Because when I went into this event, I thought that I might take the Klee engine out from time to time. Uh, against like when I was going second or against like. Um, I don't, can't remember the specific like instances, but in playtesting I was taking the Klees out a lot and I didn't want to leave the Cyber Dragon Nova and the Infinity in my extra deck when the Klees were not there, so I cited these two extra deck cards and then Carnagorgon like does double duty like by putting like Necker Valley up and then Carnagorgon um, to be able to, you know, not have your opponent be able to out it with something like a, an Olenoids or a Dynamiscus, uh, stuff like that. Uh, I did side this in a lot uh, when I played against Paleo, I just took out the second Emerald and put this in. Uh, and just tried to put Necro Valley up, uh, but then uh, Dweller was literally never put in. Uh, if I played against something like BA or something like that, at like a random a random deck, I probably would have put it in. Uh, but anyway, that is the entire deck profile, uh, side deck and all. I almost didn't give you the side deck, but now I remember this is a regional deck profile, so the side deck was actually kind of relevant. But yeah, like I said, these should have been holding legs. Couldn't get them in time. Uh, couldn't find them. Not not even in time. It was just like nobody at this event had holding legs. Um, Necro Valley was kind of good, and it was kind of alright, but I don't know if I would cite it again. Uh, didn't play against any Zoo, but I know this card's amazing from experience, because every time I play against Zoo, and I'm able to take Terra Top, or if I have my own like play, like Baba Boon and a Pendulum Summon, I'm able to take Max Seas. This card I know is amazing. Lullaby has always been like my favorite side deck card of this and last format. Storms probably should have been Twin Twisters. Uh, these extra deck cards are probably just not going to be cited again. I might still side Karn Gorgon, but only if I'm still citing Necro Valley. Uh, Imperial Order, I never resolved it. Full House was cool when I resolved it once. And Storm, I literally, it was just kind of weird. Um, I, I thought I would like Storm a lot more than I ended up liking it in general. So, overall, that is the entire deck list. Like I said, I'll be doing a regional report um, that will hopefully be up today as well. Uh, where I'll just be going through all of my matchups in detail, round by round, because I took notes on all of them. And I posted my matchups on my Facebook when I when I was playing them, that a lot of people saw. If you're friends with me on my personal Facebook, then you saw those as they were going up live. Uh, but I will go into a lot more detail about those uh, in the video. If you're interested, I will have it linked in the description if it goes up, uh, or you can just find it 
on the channel if you're a subscriber or whatever. You'll see it in your subscription feed, all that sort of stuff. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Let me know if you like Metal Foes. Let me know if you like Metal Foes Zoo. What do you thought about some of my card choices? All that sort of stuff. And other than that, be sure to like the video and support the channel and stuff like that. Check out the links in the description of my Facebook that I already talked about. I post on there when I'm at events. I post my uh, records, my day-to-day -day record. Um, if I'm at YCSs or regionals or whatever, I post those there. So if you're interested, then definitely go check that out and send me a friend request and connect with me and all that sort of stuff. But there's also a link to my Patreon in the description as well if you want to help support the channel directly and get in on a monthly giveaway that's going on at the end of this month for a box of Maximum Crisis when it hits. And it also gets you access into my personal Discord server if you want to chat with me on an unrestricted daily basis and also play games on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro for videos. That's what I do for that. But other than that... Special thanks and special shout out to Second Chance Gaming who supported me a lot. Like all the zoo cards in this deck are uh, directly from them. Uh, there's definitely a, a, a lot less zoo cards than uh, than should be uh, in a typical zoo deck. But I mean still, I wouldn't be able to play this deck if they didn't allow me to use those cards. So special thanks to them. And if you want to check them out and buy cards for yourself, then I definitely urge you to check out their site in the description of this video as well. They have excellent pricing on shipping and all that stuff that I've dealt with thus far. So definitely, if you want to support the channel indirectly, go check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that is it for this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to my sometimes incoherent rambling, all that sort of stuff. And let me know what you guys think again in the comments down below. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. And as usual, take care.